Hello everybody, I'm Miss Lisa, and welcome back to another episode of Art Tree Goes Almost Live. This is our last week of the spring session, and because of that, I wanted to give you a couple of drawing and painting lessons that might remind you about summer, because summer's on its way, right? And when I think of summer, and when I think of being a kid in the summer, I think about Hawaii, because I have lots of relatives in Hawaii, and we used to go to my grandmother's house a lot in the summer, and she lived in Lahaina, on the island of Maui. And when I think about all of the time that I spent in Hawaii as a kid, I have some really fond memories, and one of them is of a fish with a really, really long name. It's called the Humu Humu Nuku Nuku Apua'a. And here's a picture of that fish. It's a very long name for a fish, isn't it? It's also the Hawaiian state fish. Humu Humu Nuku Nuku Apua'a. So what I want to do today is I'm going to show you how to draw this fish and then we're going to color it with crayon and we might also paint it with watercolor. We're going to at least paint the background with watercolor. And let me tell you what we're going to be needing. We're going to call this a multimedia drawing and painting because we're using more than just crayon and more than just watercolor. We're using a mixture of different things. So we're going to start out with a pencil. You will need a pencil. I've got my mechanical pencil. You may use any drawing pencil you like, but remember to try not to erase. I'm also going to need a piece of paper, and your piece of paper might want to be on the heavy side because we're going to be painting with water, so a thin paper isn't the best for painting. You might want a piece of white construction paper, or if you have painting paper, that would be awesome. So I've got my pencil, I've got my paper, I'm going to need some crayons. So I've got my set of 24 crayons here. I've actually got a new box of crayons because my other crayons were getting a little bit tired. The colors in particular that we're going to need are black. We will need orange. And I've taken two oranges. I've got the yellow orange and I have red orange. And of course, if you want regular orange, that's right in the middle and you can go ahead and pull that one as well. Brown, we'll use some brown. And I've got the blue out, although I'm not actually going to be using it. This is all done, the blue on this drawing is done in ink pen. So that's another thing we're going to need. So I've got these Crayola ink pens in many different colors. I really like these pens. They make great, colors for drawing, and I have got, I pulled out the blue, the red, and the yellow. So I've got my primary colors of ink pen, and I've also got my favorite black Papermate Flare, which I do tend to use a lot when I do drawings and paintings uh, for classes, because it just makes a really nice um, outline. It's a nice outlining pen, and I use it here to go around some of these intricate areas. Now, your drawing is not going to look exactly like this, but we can make your fish look like a humu humu nuku nuku apu a'a just by the way we make the patterns on the fish. We also are going to need our watercolor paints and a brush. So I've got my Crayola eight color pan set, eight pan colors, and my brush. You'll need some water. And when you do watercolor paintings, it's always a nice idea to pull out your color chart. 
your color wheel. And we did this in an earlier lesson, in an earlier Art Tree Goes Almost Live lesson, when I was showing you how to paint the fruit in a bowl still alive. So go ahead and go back to some of those earlier classes if you want to do your own color wheel or if you want to remember how we did it for class. It's really good to have a color wheel. The thing the color wheel does is it helps us find the relationships between the colors that we're using. And when we work with relationships, we get some really nice results because we can find out which colors. The colors that are next to each other on the color wheel are called analogous colors. So these colors are analogous, these colors are analogous. When you work with analogous colors, they always look good. When you work with colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel, those look good too. Those are called complementary colors. So red and green are complements. And if I forgot what the complement of orange was, I can go right across the orange on my color wheel and remember that it's blue. If I want to know what the complement of yellow-green is, I happen to have that in my head, but you might not, we can go across the color wheel and find out that it's red-violet. So having a color wheel available is always a good thing. Now, let's think about how we're going to do this. When I draw something that I've never drawn before, I always start out thinking, what shape, what simple shape is that that I'm looking at? If I'm drawing an orange, and let's pretend I've never drawn one before, I would say the simple shape is going to be a circle because a circle is the two-dimensional shape of a sphere, and we're looking at a sphere. So I know that it's going to be a circle. When I look at something more complicated, like this ornate butterfly fish. I'm thinking, how can I draw that fish with shapes that I already know? And when I look at this fish, what I see immediately is that it's almost, the body is almost a rectangle. Can you see that? I'm seeing a rectangle here. And then the snout It's like a triangle. And the tail is also like a triangle. Not exactly, but it's close. So in my mind, I'm putting together the rectangle shape with an overlapping triangle and a triangle for the nose. Now notice that the triangle for the tail is larger and it overlaps the rectangle. So if I'm drawing the, the ornate butterfly fish and I'm doing it roughly, I'm thinking about rectangle. And then I'm thinking about triangle for the snout. And then I'm going to draw a horizontal line through here so I get the tail in the right place. I'm going to have to overlap this triangle with the rectangle. So I'm going to start this triangle about here. So I already am starting with triangle, rectangle, triangle that are close, added up together. They're going to be close to this ornate butterfly fish. And then all we need to do is just go around the outside. And for those of you that had me in drawing class before, you know this is how I work. Go around the outside and pull these shapes together. And I'm also modifying slightly. So here we have to go in. And then it comes out for the fin. And we can go around. There's a little fin here and we're back to the triangle for the snout. Now the humu humu nuku nuku apua'a is not so much a rectangle body shape, but more of an 
oval body shape. Do you see that? So again, we have a shape that's going to overlap the tail shape. So here's an oval. And the tail shape is going to have to start about here to get that triangle wide enough. If we start right at the edge of the oval shape, there's going to be basically just a, a point where the tail is going to connect to the body. And we need some width here. So we're going to make this triangle shape overlap the oval shape enough that we get some width through here. Otherwise, it's going to look like the tail is going to fall off. So let's get our oval shape. Let's draw that. And then let's overlap this nice triangle shape. And we don't have to worry too much about the snout on this one because we've already got a pointed oval. Our oval is more pointed. It's not a roundish oval. It's kind of like a curved line up and curved line down. It's like an eye shape. We're sort of starting with an eye shape. And then I'm thinking about some fins. We would have very roughly a curved line here to make this fin and almost a bumpy curved line up on top to make these two fins. And then we just add some lines and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. And we would have a fin right here. And that's what we're seeing here. The eye would go about here. Okay, so let's do this together. I will show you how to do your own humu humu nuku nuku apua'a drawing. And let's give it a little bit of space. If we draw it here, we can perhaps squish it in and have more space for water and seaweed. But let's turn the paper this way to give it some swimming space. And I'm going to start out by making a border around my paper because I'm going to be painting. And I do like doing the border because that helps contain the paint inside the border and it keeps your colors beautiful and it gives you a white frame. So let's go ahead and make our border. It's going to be a big rectangle. And the easiest way to do a border is to start with a little dot in each corner, not right up to the corner, but maybe about half an inch from either side. And then we're just going to connect the dots. And you do not need to use a ruler, and it does not need to be perfect. It's no problem whatsoever. We're just making a little border to go around our painting. And that way, when it dries, we don't even need to find a frame for it because it's already going to look like it has a white frame. And if there's any teachers watching this, the, um, because all of these paintings are framed already, framed with this white border, they're ready to go up on the wall and they look super nice up on the wall in your classroom. Okay, last side. Okay, so what I've done is drawn four dots, and then I connected the dots with a horizontal line, a vertical line, another horizontal line, and a vertical line. And for you kids, if you have trouble drawing this whole rectangle, just like this. You might want to turn the paper. This was something that helps me a lot. I'm much better at drawing lines, for some reason, in this direction. So I just turn my paper. So I'm always drawing pretty much in the same direction. I turn my paper as I go. And that's how I got my border. Okay, so we've got a big white rectangle 
and we have our white border, let's go ahead and get that fish onto the paper. So remember, the shape of the humu humu nuku nuku apu a'a is like an oval shape with pointed ends. We could call it the shape of an eye. It's like a curved line up and a curved line down. Now when I start a drawing, as many of you know, I don't put a lot of pressure on my pencil. I do the first pass or, or two with a very light pressure, which gives me a very light line, which is going to be very difficult for you to see in the video. So I'll go ahead and do it dark, but you can draw lightly first. And then when you're happy with the shape, you can go back and draw it again with a firmer pressure, which will give you a darker line. And if you work that way, you don't have to stop and erase all the time because you can just carry on. You just carry on until you get the, the line that you want and the shape that you want. Now let's take a look before we draw anything here. If we draw our fish body right in the middle of the paper, then the tail is going to go here and it's going to be the fish is going to be sort of um, not centered in the paper. It's going to be slightly to one side, but that's okay. Just think about where you want your fish. You could start your shape here and then think about where the tail is going to be. Okay, think about it before you draw. I'm going to put mine, I'm going to have my fish more towards one side of the paper. So it'll be swimming this direction and I'm going to very lightly but not so light that you can't see it. I'll just draw my curved line up and my curved line down, my eye shape. And then I'm going to draw my triangle. But remember, I'm not going to start it at the tip of my curved line up, curved line down. I'm going to start it here. And I'm just going to draw this part very lightly. And then I'll draw it darker out here, but not too dark because I'm going to modify it slightly still. Okay, I'm going to take now my top of my oval shape. I'm going to come down until it hits the triangle. And I'll basically follow the triangle line up. And you see how the tail is kind of wave, it's a wavy line. It just makes it look like the tail's moving in the water, which of course it does as the fish swims. And now down here, I'm going to come up until I get to the part of the triangle where the triangle and the oval shape cross over. And then I'll, so I've gone up here, up this curve, until I join the triangle and I come down the triangle, give it a little bit of a wavy line at the end. And now on the mouth end. I'm going to make a little bit of an in out. So an angled line right here to show the mouth. And I'm going to modify my curve line up and curve line down just a bit because humu humu nuku nuku apu a'a actually has a little bit of an angled line right here. It's not a completely curved line. Let's just go around like this. And then down here, we're going to do a diagonal line. And then it's going to come up like so. Okay, so it's not a rounded line so much. Now we can alter it slightly to give us... And if, if you want to make yours just rounded, that's absolutely fine too because once you get the markings on your fish, it will look so much like a humu humu nuku nuku apu a a that it couldn't be anything else, even if you used rounded lines. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is place the eye. The eye is actually really hard to see on this fish because the eye is dark and it's inside this black bit of pattern. So we're just gonna lightly draw the eye. I might need to move it. And then I'm looking at this blue line, and I'm going to put that blue line in. And yours does not need to look 
like mine. It, the blue line also comes down here. You can't see that too much because it's against the black. But just make the blue line like so and like so. And then the black part, you can see it curves around. Oops, sorry about that. So the, the black line curves around here. And then the black line is curved up here and diagonal. So we'll curve it up here and diagonal. And now we're just going to make this V shape down here. An angled line. And another one. And then there's a little bit of yellow that comes through here. And this line is actually not quite in the right place, but it doesn't matter because I'm going to be using black crayon to go over that. So I'm fine with that. You make this fin down here, and it's got a little red crescent right here. Now the fins to make them look like fins. We have to do the little spines in the fins. And as soon as you draw those in, they're going to look like fins. This one up on top is kind of, of course, as the fish moves, it won't be in the same place. It kind of ripples in the water, but we'll draw it like that and like that. And again, we can put some of these lines in. And down here, it seems to attach about at the end of this black uh, pattern on the body. So we'll do something like this. And then the tail, it's very distinctive. It has this black chevron. It has this black, um, almost like a, a pointed shape, like an arrowhead almost. And then it's curved on the other side. Let me make this little round. So it's angled lines, two angled lines, two more angled lines, a curved line, and another curved line, and then a curved line that goes faces the other direction. And then some more of these spines in the fins. And it's also got, you can't really see it, but it's got some blue stripes up here where the forehead would be. Okay, so there's my basic drawing of my fish. And now I'm going to use, because I know you can't see that too well, I'm going to go over it with my Papermate Flare and I'm going to be altering some of those shapes as I go. So I might not draw over the same pencil lines. And this is how I this is how I work. And that way you don't spend too much time agonizing over one thing. You can just say, hey, that'll work. That's okay. That's good enough. Because every fish is going to look different anyway. Just like us, we're all different. And by the way, these uh, fish are very good at changing color too, so they, they might not look if you had a whole bunch of they might have some differences in their appearance. If you go snorkeling in Hawaii, there's a fairly good chance you might see a couple of these. They live in the, the reefs, 
So if you go snorkeling in the reefs, you might find humuhumunukunukuapuapas, as well as the ornate butterfly fish and all sorts of beautiful fish. I have been snorkeling and it is amazing. I'm not actually very good at snorkeling because it takes a lot of energy to uh, move yourself around in those waves. I'm not really strong enough to stay out for a long time. My sister is a very good swimmer and she can snorkel for hours. Okay, so this is the part I was telling you about where we've got sort of double angled lines, more double angled lines, and then two curved lines facing the head and one curved line facing the tail. And that's, we'll get to the color in a minute, but that's how you get the pattern that's very characteristic of this fish. And now I'm just going to put some spines in the tail. And I'm going to draw this fin and put some spines back there. And I'm going to make this sort of bumpy wavy line up here to show these two fins and they're kind of rippling in the water. And then see how the black kind of comes down as a wavy line and it joins this almost horizontal line, but it's slightly diagonal. So we're going to take this and make the slightly wavy line join up to this line here. And then this yellow, these two double lines kind of come together about here. And now I need to make another wavy line here. It's going to come up and wave this way. And then I'm going to be drawing this shape here. I'm not going to worry about these little places because I'm going to be going over it with black crayon. Okay, and then there's this blue shape it's actually made by double lines, and there's part of it here. So there's this blue, I don't know if you can see it, it's a blue line that comes down like this, and part of it comes here, and then there's those two little stripes on the forehead, who are also blue, that are also blue. And there's a little bit of blue right above the lip. And then I'm just going to draw this fin. I can kind of make it wavy too. And this fin has a red band at the base of it. Let's put the eye was in a pretty good place. I'll just make it clearer. And now, I'm going to add some of the colored pen. So I like putting the blue in with this pen because it's it's very easy to see. It's a very uh, distinctive area of blue.
If you don't know what to draw this summer, find pictures of tropical fish. They are beautiful. Now I'm going over the spines in the fins with this blue as well. In Hawaii, when people are talking about this fish, they don't necessarily call it a humu humu nuku nuku apua'a every time they want to talk about it, because that's kind of a lot to say. They call it humu humu. All right. I'm going to take the yellow ink pen and I'm going to do these areas in yellow. And as you go over the black pen, you might get some of the black ink coming off onto your yellow pen. I try to just um, color between the two black lines to, so that doesn't happen too much, but if it happens, it's okay. I'm going to take my red pen and just do that little band of red right there. And now I'm going to go to the crayons. And the body of the fish, you can get some really nice effect by using the orange and when I color um, when I color for crayon resist when we paint over things I press down hard so that I cover the paper really thoroughly if I'm just coloring to get color onto the paper like this here on the body I don't press down super hard I just go over it multiple times so I'll show you what I mean I'm going to start with this yellow orange and I'm going to put down some color here on the snout and on the back. And I'm going to put it down lightly first. The other name, for, well, it has a couple names. The other, one of the other names for the humu humu nuku nuku apawa'a is the reef trigger fish. So it's one of the species of trigger fishes and it lives in the reef. Okay, this little area down here is orange as well. And then up on the snout area I can do a little bit like this because I want it to look like the white of the body kind of blends into the orange. And then I can start doing some little bit. Um, I'm going to make it darker in the center of the body with another layer of orange, yellow orange. And I'm going to do a little bit more down here. And then I'm going to switch to my red orange. And I'm going to go over some of this with red orange. So there's red orange here. You can see that the V shape is actually darker orange. Let me put that in like this.
And now we're going to take the black crayon. A little bit tricky because you have to keep it. You don't want to color in the whole eye area or you won't be able to see the eye. So leave a tiny sliver of white showing between the black of the fish and the black of the eye. Even though in the photographs you probably won't be able to find the eye because it blends right into the, the black of the body. But for the sake of your drawing, you might want to leave just a little sliver of white so you know where that eye is. So you see all of these little pencil lines that I, I uh, changed where I wanted them to be, but I'm just coloring right over them now. And so I didn't need to erase it at all. And then I need to color this area black as well. And there's our humu humu nuku nuku Let's give it somewhere to swim now. Let's get it some coral. Okay, I pulled up some shapes of coral for you to see. This was an interesting one. I think this is called the brain coral. You can probably see why. It grows quite spherical, or at least uh, dome-shaped, and I'll show you how to do this one. And then a lot of them just grow like almost like small trees. And you can see they're kind of branching. They're like lines that have a branching structure. And some of them are just beautiful. You can almost use wavy lines to draw them. So let me show you. Let's start with the rounded one. Let's put this one down here. And we're just going to make some shapes. Let me do it with the black crayon so you can see it. We're just going to use a meandering line and we're going to go all over the place. Just make your line travel, but don't cross it over something you've already drawn. Just keep going. Meandering means to wander, and the meandering line just wanders about. We're going to fill up this shape with the meandering line. So do you see how I started in one area and I'm just continuing around? I could concentrate on this area just by going back into it like this. And then let's try some branching ones that come up. And branch like this, almost like hands. Let's try some flatter shapes, but still branching. Okay, 
So we have some coral. And if you've ever felt coral, it's hard. It might look soft, it's actually hard. And we're going to make some seaweed as well. The seaweed is soft. And I'm going to make the seaweed because it flows with the water. So I'm going to use wavy lines to indicate it's sort of moving back and forth. I can even cross it over so it looks like it's turning a little bit as well. Might go on top of some of that coral. Maybe there's some longer pieces back here. poking out from behind this piece of coral. Okay, now we are going to paint this. And for the painting, we want to use a lot of water to paint the blue around the fish. But we're going to start with the coral and the seaweed. We need to resuspend the paint. I'm just going to quickly go through this and then I'll move on to some blue for the water. You know, seaweed is different colors. It doesn't all have to be green. There's some red seaweeds and some brown seaweeds, but these here are going to be green. I'm going to take a light brown, so not a lot of brown, more water than paint. Let's put some color in here. And I'm going to find some red. There is such a thing as red coral. And I'll make this coral kind of yellow green. I'll put on the yellow first because that's my lightest color. And then I'll put some green into it and mix it on the paper so that I don't get my yellow mixed up with my green in my paint box. So yellow down first. And if you mix on your paper, you're going to have to move quickly because you want to get your second color on before the first color dries. So always remember when you're mixing on your paper, you have to work fast. And if it starts to dry out, you can always get more water in your brush and bring that back to your painting. All right. Last thing I'm going to do is the water. Now to do the water, I'm going to want a lot of water in my paint because I have a, a large space and I'm going to want that color to go on pretty quickly. And go up around the fins. Now of course this fish is swimming in the water so I could paint right over it with the the blue, and I'm going to go around it. If I painted right over it, it would look like it was swimming right through the water, but I like the pattern to show, and I like the colors on my humu humu nuku nuku apua. Have you guys figured out how to say that yet?
I'll say it slowly for you. It's humu, humu, nuku, nuku, apu, aa. Now my paint is still wet down here in the seaweed, so there is going to get some mixing of the blue and the green, but that's okay because this is under the water and it's going to give it the feeling of the seaweed moving through the water and the currents. It's going to kind of blur together. Almost done. And there we go. Your very own humu humu nuku nuku apuwa'a. I hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you next time. See you for class on Wednesday. We'll do another drawing and painting. Take care. Goodbye.